Hey, what is going on guys? Baron Harder is here, and we're going to have a look at Windows performance on Serata, the Ryzen 1700 based gaming PC I built about a week ago. You can find where to watch the original build presentation in the video description, but for now, we're going to have a glimpse of what it's like to multitask, render images and files, and just the overall level of performance you can expect to get out of a PC similar to the one that I've built previously. For the things I chose to not include in this video are things that are becoming increasingly common, like opening 7 tabs in Google Chrome with YouTube video playback, very basic usage, and things of that sort. PCs are going to be more powerful, and showing these things is just not going to be that fun for you guys, I'm sure. So, in saying that, please allow me to give you a taste of Ryzen 7 Windows 10 performance. Alright, so now that we're on the desktop, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what, of what uh, benchmarks we're going to be running through today. Uh, really quickly, I know we don't have a lot of time, I don't have a lot of time, and I want to get this video out to you guys as soon as I can, so I'll try to make this as brief as possible, but um, first off, uh, for both CPU and GPU, we have the Unigen Heaven Benchmark 4.0. This is going to put the maximum amount of strain on the CPU and GPU to the point where it can render the synthetic scenes as much as it can. So. Basically, this is going to give us an overview on how gaming performance is going to be for the system, in case you haven't gamed on it before. Now, synthetic benchmarks aren't exactly the most reliable um, mode of figure out, figuring out this information. Of course, you can always hop in a game and um, figure out what your system is capable of, which is going to be a separate video that I'll be showing uh, probably within the next couple days, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but yes, Unigen Heaven, we're going to run this at 1920 by 1080 p with Anti-aliasing, I believe it's going to be MSAA times 8, but we'll get into that later. Um, this is going to be our CPU and GPU benchmark overall for both of the um, components. For the GPU separately though, we're going to use uh, Firmark. Uh, it's a benchmark for GPUs, and what it does is it throws as much synthetic um, load at that component to where um, temperatures throttle, or it tries to throttle, and the GPU is maxed out 100%. Like, there is no room for anything else to be going on. It's just that benchmark. And it gives you an active representation of what a maximum load would look like in a real world scenario, whether, whether that be for video rendering or video game playing or, you know, what what have you. Whatever you have in this, you know, doing on the system that causes 100% GPU load, this is what it's going to simulate right here. So that's going to be for GPU. And for the CPU, finally, we're going to use Cinebench, which is a very popular and very robust and very accurate, as far as I can tell, uh, CPU benchmark, which does, which does exactly what Firmark does, but flip it over to the CPU side. So it tests for both uh, single core and uh, multi core uh, processing and rendering of a specific scene. And that's basically what it's going to be. So uh, let's start with uh, Cinebench first off. So let's open this. And actually, while we do this, I'm going to open back up MSI Afterburner. This is what we're going to use to monitor temperatures, um, fan speeds, which I'm actually going to bring up to about 50. Uh, bring up to 50. And hit apply. And uh, just so you know, we're, we're going to run the Ryzen 1700 8 core 16 thread processor at the stock 3.0 gigahertz because I don't want any issues with, with, with instability. This is just an out-of-the-box configuration of what performance would be like in the Ryzen 1700 based build. So, uh, oh, and also if you want, this is going to list out all the main components, the OS build, the version of the OS that we're running, which is Windows 10 Pro, this is going to be blocked out, and 16 gigs of DDR4 clocked to 3000 megahertz. This, this is the LPX um, RAM. Uh, from Corsair is the Corsair Vengeance uh, LPX, and running 64-bit uh, based operating system. So, um, first, you'll notice that I already ran the test. This is from a previous attempt at this video, but I figured out audio was completely crap. So I'm, I'm just basically redoing this video, giving you a more professional and more in-depth look at what the system is capable of on the side of Windows performance. As I said before, gaming performance will be in a later video. So let's start by running the full CPU, all eight cores, 16 threads, right off the bat. Let's go. Just getting ready. And as I understand, each of these blocks are separate threads. 
So with each one that completes, it finds another block of the uh, diagram to fill in, and it circles around to render the entire image. It's going decently fast, and 8 cores does really, really help, along with the 16 threads, and uh, whatever Ryzen's version, or uh, whatever AMD's version of Turbo Boost is, um, it might view as um, 3 gigahertz, but I believe if we were to look back here, here we could see something of CPU usage. I'm not sure if it was monitoring that at all, but anyways, um, it it usually hovers at around. Let me see here. Um, it usually hovers around like at 100% load. It usually hovers around 3.15 or just slightly above that. So basically, that's what we were running at for this test. So for the previous one, we ran at 1373, and we took a little dip. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it, but it's not. A, but it's not significant, so there's nothing really to worry about here. And for the next part, we're going to uh, run the single core, but it is really slow, as, as I found out the last time I ran this. So I'm going to speed this up, and see you guys at the end. So we're going to click this, and I will see you at the end. Alright, so we have finally gotten the results, and the single core results for the CPU, in particular the 1700, was 128. And if you would notice down here, we have uh, our first result down here, sorry, up here, and our second result down here, and they are basically the same. So, basically we are running right below, um, about 10 points below, and it's a Core i7-3770, and a non-overclockable uh, CPU that's third generation Intel, which I find kind of offsetting or off-putting. I don't know. Uh, I I always heard that uh, that since the 17 like the Ryzen 7 line was released, that people who did benchmark it before I did realized the single core performance wasn't on a very you know debatable level. But then again, you're getting double the cores, double the threads, or actually uh, yeah, double the threads at half the price of the current gen 7th generation uh, Intel uh, processors, which I find is still amazing, but anyways, uh, the results are very respectable. I enjoy seeing these high scores, even though single core could be better. And I, and I don't know if AMD is going to uh, in, like implement software tweaks or firmware updates or anything that might refine the performance of the Ryzen 7 5 um, and, th sorry, Ryzen 7 5 and uh, three line of processors, so we'll just have to wait and see, but for now, this is a good score that I'm comfortable with, so let's click out of this. We're going to save this. Yes, we do, because these are the highest results for both single and multi-core processing that we've gotten so far, so let's move on to Furmark, and this is going to be pretty interesting to find out what the Zotac GTX 1070 can, uh, can do. Uh, we're gonna run at uh, the native uh, 1920 by 1080, and I'll explain why I say native right uh, afterwards. But uh, we're gonna go with 8x MSAA. Uh, gonna go to settings. I'm gonna set it a little longer than what I had it before my other trial of this video. Gonna go to seven. Yep. Um, these are our custom settings. It's pretty straightforward. Gonna run the custom preset and go. So I'm going to see if, uh, no it's not, okay. Uh, okay, so basically before uh, we go over back to MSI Afterburner, we're just gonna take a look at uh, the frame rate, the core uh, the core frequency, and the temperature, which is slowly on the rise down here. It shouldn't go above 80 degrees, and this is a fairly short test, so it probably won't have a chance to get up that high, we'll see. But uh, the fans are about at 50%, they're very quiet, the fans on the Zotac 1070 Amp Edition are very quiet, and I really enjoy that a lot. So, um, But then again, I will be switching to an AMD uh, GPU as soon as Vega comes out, or I might just decide to get dual 580s or something. I don't know. But um, yes, we are trucking along. The GPU is at about 98 to 100% utilization. It's Oh, it's actually going to 77. It might reach 80 before we... Uh, okay. Everything is good. The power limit is jumping around actually a pretty good amount. So, 
80, there we go, okay. The fans got significantly louder, actually, <laughs> once it reached this point. We're almost done. 98, 99, 100, and there we go. Our max GPU temperature was 82 degrees at the resolution 1920 by 1080. The resolution of this monitor is not a perfect 1920 by 1080p. That's what I mentioned before. And what I have to do is kind of downscale it to, I believe it's, um, it's 1862 by 10, no, sorry, by 1008. So that's what my, what my monitor is actually running at. But this test condenses all of those pixels into my set resolution. So we, we don't have to worry about that. So minimum FPS was 109, max was 11, uh, was 111, and average was 110. What I want, well, and what I'm actually very proud to see is that the minimum and average, or the minimum and max, aren't too far apart. So it wasn't a lot of dips or anything during the test. And this is with MS, uh, with eight times MSAA. So that's really hardcore uh, anti-aliasing there. So that's really good to see. Uh, our GPU core clock stayed pretty consistent around between 1900 and 1940 megahertz, but this is the average right here, 1923, so, and our memory stayed exactly the same, I noticed. Uh, this is our 8-core processor, CPU speed. It did hover above 3 gigahertz automatically, but this was our average right here. Uh, I have separate software running in the background that I was able to see during the test. And it was at uh, 3.15 gigahertz as its max, so we'll just keep that in mind for now. Uh, and our OS, so that is very good. I'm very surprised at both <laughs> both the sound of the fans not running as uh, as quick as it can go, and at um, also how gr how long it took for the GPU to be under max load to reach 80 degrees. So awesome stuff there. And last but not least, we're going to run the Unigen Heaven benchmark, but before we do. Uh, let's take a look at this GPU usage. Temperature. Wow, this is, this is oh power. Okay. Uh, GPU temperature. Yes, this is where it spiked out at 81 degrees. E yeah, even I said 82 on the uh, on the Furmark benchmark. It, I guess. Well, it doesn't have to be exact, but what we're looking for is uh, right here is the GPU usage uh, clocking out at around 100%, not quite. We have a few dips here and there, like 95. But, as soon as the test was over, boom. Back down to 3, 2, 1, uh, 2%. 2 And then up and down from here. So, here is the memory clock, or sorry, <laughs> the GPU core clock, right here. Memory clock stayed the same. Uh, CPU usage. Sorry, the frame rate. CPU usage. Wow, that's actually really low. <laughs> so we didn't use hardly any CPU, uh, um, like the available space b between the cores and threads. We didn't use anything, really. O only about 14 or 15% of the entire uh, processor. Very interesting. Okay, cool. All right, let's exit out of that. And finally, move on to Unigen Heaven 4.0. And we're gonna use the custom settings that I use for Eevee, just for comparison on my sake. I won't, I won't really like include any of her results in this video, but this is just for me to see how far this system improved from Eevee. So we're gonna use custom DirectX 11 as it, uh, as the uh, the other system used as the API Ultra anti-aliasing I set to eight on Eevee. So. Uh, we're gonna do full screen for this one. Hopefully, no, actually, let's keep it windowed. Uh, should we go for, yeah, well, why not? Yellow. And we're just going to fast forward it from here. So, uh, sit back, relax, and, uh, enjoy, I guess, what you see. <laughs> And here go our final results, and I have to say, this is at least about 
200 additional points above Eevee. This is awesome. So, I do want to point out a few things. The FPS might have been a little tampered with in scenes, I want to say 17 and 18. There was a bit of stuttering here and there. But this is our average frame rate, 112.3 frames per second. At these settings right here, MSAA times 8. And our minimum, yes, this is where the dip really was. And those, uh, about scene 17 to about 19, there was a bit of stuttering. But our maximums and average stay about the same. I might do another run of this, you know, for myself, just to see what it could actually do. But this is what you get out of the box. Without too many programs being limited on to each of the, uh, each of the system disks or, you know, any, you know, malware scanners or anything bogging the system down, this is what you get out of the box with this combination of parts that I built Serana around. So we're going to save this to a profile and we're going to close out of this and find out, oh, whoops, <laughs> gonna quit. And there we go. So guys, that's about that. That's about it. When it comes to Windows performance with Serana, the Ryzen, C oh, wow. <laughs> the Ryzen 7 1700 PC. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And once again, there will be a, vid a video with uh, games and, um, and maybe a, maybe another benchmark I might have left out here and there uh, in this video. There will be a future video with games that will be set against Serana. And that will come within the next few days, I promise. I will try to get more videos out to you guys because I really enjoy doing this. Um, if there's anything else I'm missing out... Oh! Uh, <laughs> please like the video if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, please let me know down in the comments below. Also, letting, letting me know what I could have done to make this video a little more professional or clean or more enjoyable for you guys. I really do want to give out better content for you guys. And I do want to point out that we now have 31 subscribers. 31 people that are watching my videos and joining the community and just enjoying PC hardware. This is exactly what I wanted. I am so... I'm so excited to keep going with this. Thank you so much for each of you guys that are subscribed, and thank you to those who are looking to subscribe and join the community. And that about does it. For Windows 7 performance, sorry, Windows 10 performance on my res... Oh my gosh, I cannot talk. I'm so excited. I'm sorry, guys. This has been Windows performance on the Windows... Uh, wow, okay, I probably got to cut this part out. But anyways, Windows performance, Ryzen 7... 1700 Serana. Thank you so much for watching, guys, once again. I hope to see you guys in the next one, and have a wonderful day. Peace.